One of the challenges uh, in visiting Argyll and the west coast of the Highlands in Scotland is that uh, everything's quite spread out. So if you've only got a couple of days or a day and you want to see some key things, uh, then it can be quite difficult. Um, so this is just my recommendation on a good day out where you're going to see plenty of things. So this video starts at Carnossery Castle, which is just north of Kilmartin. We're down to Kilmartin and then down to Dunath, which is where basically the Scots, the Scottish Kingdom started. Cairnbarn along the Crinan Canal. To Crinan itself, I've got a little look at the harbour uh, and then at the locks, the uh, locks of the Atlantic back along the canal and then across what must be one of the straightest roads in Scotland. Quick look back at Crinan from the uh, the other side of the uh, estuary and then uh, up to see all the standing stones uh, and the cairns before a quick cup of coffee and home uh, at Kilmartin Museum. Great parking and um, information on Kilmartin Glen, the art work and the rocks carvings and so on. Um, but let's just go up to the castle. So to get them to the castle, I just want to go through the style. Right, let's look downstairs. Kitchen, obviously. <laughs> Water comes down here into the kitchen. Um, this is where the range would be. And then small oven on the left here, which was presumably for baking. And uh, wastewater just sluiced outside on the left hand side there next to kitchen is the cellar larder and then <laughs> another cellar just before just before I got the tower um, this is what the inside looks like you get an idea of the floors and how quite how big the rooms would have been, how high the room, rooms would have been. Right, access to the tower. Let's go. So, coming up to the tower, this is the first big room on the first floor. Let's have a look what's in here. Yep, that smells like it's still being used for its original purpose. Alright, let's go upstairs. This is the staircase to the Western Tower.
just walking back to the car park at Karnasri Castle. As you can see, fabulous space for van lifers. Currently in Kilmartin village, although it's more of a hamlet, at the top end of Kilmartin Glen. Kindly provide a, a barbecue. Although I can't see a grill. Um, the museum's closed, I mean, it's a bit early. The museum opens at 10 o'clock, so I might have to have a look later on. Uh, but I do like the church here. Uh, a lot of carving. A lot to see. But maybe first of all, we'll just go and look at the uh, Commonwealth War graves, which are uh, just on the south side of the church graveyard. And as you can see, for the small population that there really is on the west coast, uh, there's a lot of graves. And into the graveyard of the church. So Dunath Fort is the home of the Scottish nation, or so it is considered to be, because in the 5th century the seat of the Scottish Kingdom and uh, the Scotty, who uh, from Ireland set up shop here and uh, called Scotland their own. Just to the top of Dunnet uh, Fort, Kilmartin, road from Oban to Gilped. Crinan Canal. You can't actually see Crinan, it's just behind that man, that small hill and the sea. Excellent.
This is the Cairn Barn end of Crinan Canal, which is a shortcut to the Atlantic. There are 15 locks all together along the length of the canal, including the sea lock at the end. So 3,000 boats mainly, pleasure boats, come through the locks every year and just about to see a boat go through, it's pretty cool. So, so anyway, this is Eleanor Boyle uh, from Inverness, I believe. Uh, no, no, from West Kilbride. West Kilbride, right. and you're. I'm, sco I'm skippering, helping the owners of Morning Star. Brilliant, which is parked there. Which is parked there, uh, and we're helping bring them, bring the boat down from Inverness to Larks, okay. uh, where it's going to spend the summer chartering. Um, and the owners are getting a wee bit of instruction while they're coming down. Brilliant. Uh, but the main, the main purpose is to get the boat safely down to Largs. Yeah, great. And how long, how long does, it, does, does that take all in all? Um, well, we've been, we've been fairly gentle coming down and we've been, we left a uh, week past on Sunday, so that's eight, eight days, eight days ago. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Um, and we came and through, down. Through, Ob through Oban. Through Oban. Stop off in Oban. Yeah, stopped in Oban, stopped in Crewe. Oh, did um, you? Uh, stopped in Ardfern. And last night, or last night, we were stopped halfway along the canal here. Oh, in the marina. Yep. Yeah, nice. This was a nice space there. Yep. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. So, so you, and and uh, you do this all over the world, Alan? I, I do uh, up to a point, mostly Europe, uh, kind of Canaries, Croatia, Greece, Scotland. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of it's been good. Br um, brilliant. Yeah. What a I life. Have a good, I have a good life. I am jealous. <laughs> Beginner's mistake. So this is uh, Crinan Harbour uh, as opposed to Crinan Lock and um, nice natural harbour and the beginning of the uh, Crinan Trail actually uh, you can park just there great views to Jura and the islands and just a lovely spot actually if you're on the west coast and okay on boats then I would really recommend doing the Curry of Reckon and the wildlife trips um, because it really is quite amazing. I think it's the second biggest whirlpool in the world. Something like that, I'll have to check. So I've always thought that uh, Crinan Harbour was a bit of a diamond in the rough and uh, sort of a bit of a secret spot because it really is quite a nice place. And uh, now I've got the Crinan Trail which starts off on the shoreline down here but uh, it's nearly lunchtime so I want to get to the Crinan Hotel for hopefully for some fish and chips So my favourite, one of my favourite places to eat in uh, Argyle is at the Crinan Hotel, they do great fish and chips. Um, but um, if you miss lots sort of lunchtime, then uh, there is a cafe, which I think is owned by them just here, uh, which has absolutely amazing scones. So this is the um, sort of last pit stop before the sea lock and that's the Atlantic Ocean, simple as that. I was just talking to the uh, lock keeper 
who was saying that they've been struggling with water. Certainly last year they were short of water and that they're bringing a new system into play where people have to book in an attempt to try and get two or three boats going through a lock at a time rather than one at once because the tons of water that end up going out to into the Atlantic from the reservoirs up on the hill all the way along the canal uh, is just too much for them to replenish with the volume of traffic that's going through. The, uh, the walk along the side of the canal is really good, good for bikes too and uh, what, we're doing, what I'm doing at the moment is walking away from the lock trying to walk up an appetite for lunch along the canal back towards Cairnbarn and the canal is basically cut into the side of the hill with the estuary right alongside and quite a drop so I reckon this has got to be one of the prettiest cottages in Scotland, if uh, not in the whole of the UK. Right on the canal, with the swing bridge, boathouse, and know you can see, but the smoke coming up out of the trees is actually the puffer. Pelican ships, courtesy of the Crinan Hotel, with just a marvellous view. Can't go wrong. So Vic 32 coming through the Cairn Barn side of the, uh, the canal. It's what you like to see on the Crinan Canal. Absolutely fabulous. There you go. Just come from Crinan. Can you do it? In a minute when the pop is out. Yeah. Would you mind shutting the slot gate? I'm just going to go and do the other one. So oh, I can brilliant, I'll copy you. Talk you through it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolute pleasure. No, no, I was <laughs> divers have the secret of eternal youth. Do they? Yeah. So basically that's the Crinan Canal there. There's one of the most beautiful cottages in Scotland on the Crinan Canal. And this is looking back towards the sea lock at Crinan. Beautiful sandy beach.
another lagi an x-shaped layout of standing stones for a reason that no one knows purpose unknown quite striking but given the rich history of the, uh, the glen itself it's really not surprising that even if they were just meeting places they wouldn't be uh, marked out with something rather grand so I'll carry on to the end of the field and uh, see what we can find This is uh, Temple Wood, very obviously a stone circle with what must have been either a grave or an altar in the middle. <laughs> 